Okay, so the game is Time Pirates, and this is one that I got uh, for free off Board Game Geek Plus shipping. Um, someone wanted to give it away. I had actually noticed it because I was bidding on a copy of it for very little, and noticed someone was giving it away. Uh, it's a fairly simple game. I've never played it before. This is a first look. Uh, so... Let's uh, take a peek at what the rules are like, and beyond the theme which interested me, that of people going back in the time to steal artifacts, uh, there wasn't a lot else that convinced me that I was terribly interested in it, and it's not hugely tied to that theme, so I don't know if this is going to be too pleasing an entry for me, but it looks like an interesting game all, all the same. So what happens at the beginning, we have this set up, set of contracts here, and these are saying, I will get X number of pieces of this color. So for example, here it says, I will get uh, six purple pieces, and then that's worth seven points because of that. The white ones say, I will get this many pieces of different colors, and the most powerful of that is... Uh, uh, the four-point scores, which say you get five counters. Those are a little easier to get, so the point score from them is a little less valuable. But there's another advantage to getting those. Now, over here <coughs> uh, is randomly set up a number of artifacts in the different time zones in the game. And there are paths between these time zones. The little symbols, the atomic uh, symbol is for regulating the movement of the time police, who's this black guy here. He doesn't like you. He's trying to prevent you from stealing these artifacts. <clears throat> Each player in turn, and I'm going to play with the full complement of six, going counterclockwise, as I always do, instead of clockwise. Uh, each player in turn, and I think this is actually done in opposite order, Yeah, so the last player will get to play will get to place first, and then the second to last player places second. Uh, chooses an epoch they want to start in, and they just put their piece there. So, for example, green would look and say, "This is kind of cool because it has a lot of green pieces, but there's some bonus pieces, and I'll explain these in a moment." So, for example, these have arrows. That means, as an action, you're allowed to trade them to other people. Uh, there's another one, which is the little atomic symbol on some pieces. And that allows you to do something, too. The atomic allows you to throw the chip away in order to jump anywhere on the board. So, those are the two special pieces in the game. Uh, and there's a significant number of each. Those count as special actions, which means they don't cost you an action during your turn. Now, during your turn, uh, what you do is first, you look, is the policeman with me? If the policeman is with you, you have to discard one of the artifacts that you've picked up in the game. Uh, and it has to be from your largest color set. If you don't have any tokens, you don't lose anything. You must discard all the white tokens that you have. White tokens are cool because they count as wildcard pieces. You can use them as though they're any color in order to fulfill these contracts that are up here. We'll get to that. Uh, then the player, if he's with the time police, must move along an arrow to get to another era. And I believe you have to follow the directions of the arrows. So it's not, not every connection is, is um, well, I think none of the connections are bi-directional, actually. I'm just looking to see there's nowhere where there's parallel arrows going. So if you can get to some place, you can't go back right away. You have to figure out a, a loop to get you there. And then, you're allowed to perform one standard action. 
Your other standard action, normally you get two, was fleeing the time police. You can't stay in the same place as him. Okay, if it's... Uh, if you're not in the same epic as the time police, you have the option of restocking an epic. If an epic doesn't have enough pieces to f fill all its spaces, you can draw from the bag. Now in here, there's pieces that look like these, and then there's little black pieces that move the time police. I can't find one right off my hand. Uh, and they, deter they tell you which arrow set the time police move on. Once seven of them are down, the next one that's drawn will cause the end of the year scoring round. Now, okay, so that happens when you, when you uh, refill. You might end up drawing some time police movement markers. And if enough of them happen, we take a pause for scoring. Your basic actions are limited to the following. You can move along one of these time paths, and you get two of these each turn if you didn't start with the, if you didn't, if you're not forced to flee by the time police. You can move along a time path. Uh, you can take an artifact token from whatever epoch you're sitting in. Uh, or you can jump up to the bazaar, fulfill a contract. So, for example, if you had two blue tokens, you could get this contract, and now you have two points to score. Now, the value of the tokens makes a little jump here between four and six. So you might want to try to aim for that. Eventually, the number of tokens will be uh, of contracts here will be so small, and all the lower valued ones I assume will be gone, so that you have to aim for those higher valued uh, contracts. Once you fulfill a contract in that way, then you can jump back onto any space, uh, any epoch on the time board. So it doesn't hurt you to fulfill a contract. You can do that. And, and, and score the money or, or the points, well, score the contract. You don't score the points yet. And then uh, return back to where you were or someplace better. Um, is that it? Yeah. Okay. And once that eighth police marker comes out, the, ter the year ends and all the discarded artifacts and all the police markers go back in the bag and are shaken up and all the players score the value of the contracts they've collected so far. You do this twice more. There's a total of three scoring rounds. After the third scoring round, there's uh, so here's the thing. Contracts you get in the first scoring round, you get to score them on the second and third as well. So you want to grab your points early because they count more the more times you get to score them, obviously. <clears throat> but on that third scoring round, there's one more thing that you're allowed to do. You're allowed... Everybody secretly matches up all the contracts they have of a given color, and they can use these white contracts as wild cards in that color. And what happens here is, if you have... If you have at least one contract that's actually from each of the five colors, you get a two-point bonus. So if you've filled a contract in every color, you get a bonus. Also, if you have the most total points in a given color, and this is where the whites come in as wild cards, for, for contracts that you've scored, you get an additional two points for that color. And that counts for each color. So different people may be trying to collect different sets and competing with each other like that. <coughs> uh, those special powers, you can use as many of them as you like. So for example, if I wanted to trade in a contract, that's when I probably turn in these trade counters because I can't really hurt someone with those because I'm giving them the same kind of power as I have if I hold on to a counter that they want. Um, all right. Well, that's the basic uh, flow of the game. 
I'm going to jump in and play a little bit after I do that setup decisions, and I'll talk about those in a moment. But like I said, each player has to start in their own era. Now I'm marking who's who with my dice because I don't have an easy way to remember colors otherwise. Uh, I don't have a purple die, so I'll use a black one here. Uh, okay, so now blue gets to start, and I don't know. I'm not with the time pirate. I can't refresh anything. I'll grab a couple of little thingies. That's my two actions. I don't know what else to do. Seems like an option. Over to yellow. Yellow definitely wants a wild card. They could replenish this, but they don't really want to do that. Uh, and I'll just take a purple piece. What the heck? On to red. Red says, wow, lots of purple, but I like this trade ability. I'm going to grab these. You got a little nuke ability. Over to white. Again, he doesn't want to replenish other people's stuff unless he's definitely going in there. So he'll just grab a couple of blue counters. Over to purple. Says these red counters look the most interesting. And then over to green, who says, yeah, I'm going to take green counters. And so far, nothing's really happened, right? People are just grabbing stuff. Nobody's replenishing anything because they don't want to hand a bonus to somebody who's already set up for it. So we get back to blue. And blue says, do I want the rest of these counters? Do I want to replenish? What do I want to do? I'm going to pull two counters for the 1200 to 1299 period. See if anything better shows up. Because I don't have any great goal in mind right now. Okay. Well, a time police counter showed up. And that says, follow a one. Oh, that's not good. A one takes the time police to him. I got to continue that replenishment. So the time police may leave. And they do. They go here. We're seeing... And I get another red. Well, I feel safe now. I'll scoop a red and a white. And say my turn's good. Those time police didn't catch me because I didn't start a turn with them. Now to yellow. Yellow also wants to replenish. And you can see there's little reason to leave an area. Unless you're threatened. Or have something that you want to look for. So none of this really helps yellow terribly. Uh, we could go here and grab another white piece. And that's their two actions. They did, their replenishment didn't help them. Over to red. Red just started a turn with the time police. Uh-oh. Well, red has to discard a token. They'll get rid of this purple one. Uh, I'll put discards over there, I guess. And now, he must take a move. Uh, doesn't really matter where. From here, he can go here or here. Both are going to be in danger of the time police. He'll go up here, and he'll pick up another green, because he's got greens already. What the heck? Over to the white player. And he says... Well, I'm not sure I'm thrilled with what I've got as choices here. Uh, I don't really want to go here terribly. I don't see any blue anywhere. Uh, see, I'm in danger of the time police, and I don't like that. Not, well, I'll do a replenish, see what I can find. Well, a replenish may be a dangerous thing sometimes. He drew a time police one. It sends it here. He's got to keep drawing. It's this. Now, white 
wants blue counters. He's going to move. Oh, that doesn't really get him away. None of these are terribly intriguing. He could return and grab himself a contract. So he hasn't done an action yet. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's going to go back, grab himself a two-point contract, and then drop down here. Is that the best? Looks as good as anything. And take a purple trade counter. All right, and now that puts it on the purple player who's sitting up here. Uh, so now, if he draws the time, the time cop is going to be an annoyance to the green player if he doesn't draw, which may be a good reason not to. But I don't think there's a. Well, he may not want to draw because he'll end up ahead there. Yeah, he's going to take a, a movement here and pick up a red trade counter instead. Uh, and now we go to green, and green's screwed by the time police here. He has to lose a counter, has to flee the time police, we'll go up here, and now he could take a counter, and he wants to do that. He feels like He's paid enough of a price. There's a chance the time police might catch him, but there's a chance they won't. Uh, I'll go ahead. All right, I'm going to load this up because I showed most of the basic play. I may uh, come back a couple more times as I'm playing.